Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Load shedding and the collapse of Transnet continue to cast a shadow over the medium-term budget policy statement. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss some of the highlights and lows. Hi, Terence. Nice to know. It was Transnet's turn to make the headlines, but ESCOM's bailout still looms large. Yes, that's correct. You know, Transnet has put out its recovery plan a couple of days ago. And uh, in announcing that recovery plan, they said that without a capital injection and some debt relief, they've got 130 billion rands worth of debt, monthly repayments of a billion rand a month, and their revenues have been falling as they, particularly their rail business has collapsed. Uh, they're not going to be able to implement that uh, plan. Uh, the finance minister batted it away somewhat and said, while his door's not closed to a, to a supporting transnet in this way, given its importance to the economy, he's he's not going to leave it very wide open. And he, he sets a number of conditions for the discussion. The one main one being, I think, that it needs to be aligned to the freight logistics roadmap, which is nearly was about to be published. And that's all about bringing in competitive pressures, particularly into the rail and the ports, legit, ports sectors where we know the rail has been a monopoly business entirely, the ports less so, but a lot of inefficiencies, and we're trying to get private sector participation in there. And I think also that there's going to be, need to be some self-help on the cards. Now, I know that the the Transnet plan does include a lot of self-help, including the sale of non-core businesses, but they pointed out, one of the Treasury officials pointed out to me, it took a year and a half to negotiate the debt uh, relief for Eskom. And this was sort of, uh, uh, as the minister said, it was almost came as an announcement with an invoice and he's not prepared to countenance that. So they're going to go through a discussion now. I imagine there will be some relief at the end of the, that process and some capital injection support. But I think there's going to be a bit of hardball played by the Treasury. And I think they want to... Uh, a bit like with the Eskom, uh, as you mentioned, it, it still looms large. That was the big announcement in the February budget of $254 billion. They also tightened up the conditionalities around that support today with a, a bit of an amendment to the legislation that was passed in June, June or July. Any support for these state-owned enterprises is now firmly linked to reforms. Yes, I think uh, conditionality is the name of the game at Treasury. It always has been. Uh, but but it's not never uh, been clear that those conditions were always implemented or executed as advertised. And I think there's a view to try to tighten it up. As I mentioned, this legislation amendment, making the loans to Eskom real loans. So there's actually going to be an interest rate payable, as well as, you know, if the conditions uh, are not being met, there's a bit more muscle given to the uh, to the to the finance minister to not one give the allocations as advertised, as well as maybe not to do the eventual debt to equity conversion. Now that's a very important for Eskom and its sustainability. We saw their massive loss this week and the announcement of another loss to come for the current financial year. So I think they're going to want to stick to those conditions, and that tightening just gives the finance minister some additional. A pressure point to push through those reforms. You know, the ones in Eskom are all about the unbundling, the restructuring of the energy sector, not putting in any new coal, only really focusing your capital budgets around uh, distribution and transmission infrastructure, and then maintenance of the coal fleet. So those sort of elements. Uh, similarly, is the, the case with Transnet. There's going to be strict conditionalities if anything comes through. And we even saw with the now the fact that one of the conditions was that they of their three billion rand bailout of earlier this year was that they start selling non-core assets at a certain clip, and they failed to do that, um, and therefore they've only got a portion of that bailout. And similarly, they're watching Eskom quite closely around its non-core disposals and the fact that those haven't progressed, and that also could be a trigger for not uh, making the payments. There was some positive news on the ESCOM municipal arrears debt issue. Yes, I think extremely positive. Uh, I was sceptical. Uh, I've said so on this platform. 
uh, about whether this debt relief would come through uh, as as the model was announced in February, along with the Eskom debt relief. This is basically to write down the arrear debt of the municipalities. We know that they owe currently about 65 billion plus, but at the end of March, it was around 58 billion rand. And as of that date, all that amount of the municipalities, and there's hundreds outstand uh, of municipalities owing Eskom, and that make up that, that 58 billion rand figure. But the big ones, and 67 of them, have now made an application sort of covering 97% of that arrear debt. So it would be a game changer for these municipalities if they can meet the conditions and over the three years in tranches, in three separate tranches, get their debt fully written off. Now, the key thing for Eskom, it's not a dripping rose for anyone, but not for Eskom either, but is for Eskom is to get uh, liquidity into the business because these Part of the conditions is to keep the current account, so that monthly account that uh, payable to Eskom up to date. And we know that these uh, municipalities have been slipping f- further and further into the red. So that would be the sort of benefit for Eskom in the short term to get that, as well as to get the arrear debt, which is unlikely ever to be paid, really off its books. And for the municipality, it should be a game changer because this is a real albatross around most of these, many of these municipalities. And if they can get this out of the way, and really what the conditions, and there are 14 of them, are really about doing business properly. I know it's not easy, (laughs) but uh, being able to collect uh, for services rendered and then pay for the person who's provided that service is a culture we have to try and establish. So it's positive to see that 67 have applied, about 36 36 have been approved. Uh, So it's uh, it's a big step forward on, on that area front which is a real albatross around the electricity system, particularly Eskom. There's also been an interesting development on the new energy vehicle front. Yes, I think uh, for many, many months, if not years, the automotive industry has been waiting for some sort of announcement around the incentive package that's going to come their way as they need to transition from ICE vehicles, the internal combustion engine, to new energy vehicles, as they call it, basically the main one being either battery electric vehicles or a hybrid version of that, and then some also some fuel cell electric vehicles. But battery electric is the technology that's gaining prominence around the world. And the markets that we export to, into as South Africa uh, are part of that transition, are ahead of that curve, way ahead of we, where we are. So the fact that in February next year, which is the when the budget review 2024 will be released, we'll have some idea of what incentives will be in place for the production side of the new energy vehicle landscape. Uh, the minister made it clear it won't be a consumer incentive. It won't be supporting you and me to buy an electric vehicle because I think their view is that that could just uh, stimulate e- imports. Um, although the automotive industry itself has said it's vital to develop a domestic electric vehicle market. And without that, it's going to be very difficult. So the devil's always in the detail and the detail will only really be made known uh, around February next year. And then we'll see uh, what the response of the industry is to it. But there's been a lot of engagement on this point and we have been very slow in coming one to a final policy on this and then to announcing the incentives in a context where the rest of the world are is moving ahead with quite hefty incentives. Overall, the weak economy was the big feature and it's been affecting the fiscal balance. Yes, so from the micro perspective, lots of action, as you can see, uh, from Transnet, Eskom, new energy vehicles, uh, the infrastructure and the way that's going to be managed in the future also featured in this medium-term uh, announcement. But it's all overlain by this very dismal uh, situation that the country still finds it in. And the key issue here is that we're not growing at anywhere at a rate that uh, that we need to if we're wanting to create jobs and de- deal with our developmental backlogs. And again, we've shaved our growth outlook uh, to 0.8% for, for this year, 2023, uh, which is nothing to write home about. But Given the intense load shedding, which is linked to the very first question around Eskom, um, it's been very intense this year and probably more intense than the Treasury uh, indicated. And then the collapse of the rail uh, service rail service and 
the inefficiencies in the port system. Those those two elements are coming through uh, in the growth figures. And then on the revenue side, a major markdown, a revision down, over 50 billion rand down uh, in collections versus what was announced in February. And that's really, we don't have any longer the tailwind that the commodity prices gave our miners and they gave us a windfall in the last budget and we weren't able to sustain that even though personal income tax and VAT collections are up. And uh, that means that all the other ratios are out of kilter. When your growth is so low and your revenue is coming under pressure, you know, all your ratios come under pressure. And that also has meant that we're going to have had to increase the pace at which we borrow this year. And we're going to be borrowing at a very high clip. And that puts all sorts of pressure down the line on the debt to GDP ratios, <laughs> the deficit for this year, the, the fiscal deficit for this year is going to be wider. But we're going to still try and claw back some of this, as the Finance Minister said, through the cutting of expenditure while we raise, if, if we, we um, uh, have much lower tax revenues, they're clawing back about half of that, or not even half of that, through uh, expenditure reductions of around 21 billion versus over 20, uh, 50 billion of foregone or tax that's not going to come in that we initially thought. So, and, and that's obviously contentious in this very difficult economic period. But if we don't start cutting, we can see what's happening uh, now on the uh, the interest payment line. It's the, been the fastest growing item for many years. And it's it's now the, the three here rise and it's going to be something like 1.7 trillion rands worth of interest, which actually is now bigger than some of our big ticket items in our budget over the period of health and education and even uh, policing. Something needs to give. And unfortunately, there has to be some uh, adjustment to expenditure, even though we've got so many social needs. But on the uh, on the whole, it's a really difficult balancing act. And I think uh, the way they've done that expenditure cut is to look at what the underspending was over the last few years. And it's actually a little bit below that average last year, about 28 billion underspending. So hopefully it won't impact as much uh, as it as it could, but it's it's an important signal, I think, to the public sector to tighten its belt where it can, but be supportive, particularly in the growth stimulating sectors of the economy. This ESCOM, the Transnet, getting that sorted out, but particularly on spending capital budgets in you know in favour of capital budgets over consumption spending. Thank you. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.